All right, I got some people coming in. Can y'all hear me okay? Y'all hear me? Hold on, let me turn my volume down on my iPad so I can see the comments. <clears throat> All right, good deal. Let's get some people in here. I've been holding off doing this, but it seems like it's the right time. <laughs> and I'm going to try to do it about as professionally and politely as I possibly can. But where to start, where to start. I agree, Damon. Oh, Matt, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to do it right. Anyway, we got about 50 people in here, so let's let's just start here. All right, the title it Kevin Hensley and the the Storm. So let's let's look. We'll start with we'll start with Kevin. You know, on my part, okay. And I've talked to Kevin and um and. Just so everybody's aware, Kevin is doing just fine. Um, what's going on, Travis? I'm going to try not to pay attention to the comments. So I got moderators in here. Y'all do what you got to do. So um, first off, as far as Kevin goes and my response to it, number one, last I knew and last I checked on the side of my truck, and as well as my DOT numbers, and the keyword is my. That information is for me and Kevin to handle. It's not for anybody else. Now, as far as everybody who wants to be YouTube lawyers and stuff like that, I'll just put it out there that per FMCSA guidelines, which RD, if you're in here, I'm glad you did a video because you were absolutely correct. The FMCSA is no different if there's any veterans in here, then reg Army regulations. For example, AR 670-1, Field Manual 22.1. They are regulations, rules, and guidelines. Nothing can be taken away. You know, you can't take away from them, but you can add to them. Correct? That's what you can do. Now, this is per. Once again, for all YouTube lawyers. And people who think they understand what the carrier side of stuff is. And that little blurb that everybody's t talking about and sticking to, right? You, everybody's like, oh, you can't have alcohol, you can't do this, you can't do that. There is nothing in the FMCSA guidelines and rules that states that you can't have alcohol. That you can't drink. Okay, but what it does do in that little blurb, as well as the other 200 page for subsection 40 that nobody wants to go read, it tells you everything that you're not supposed to do. So let's just make it perfectly clear. As long as you're off duty or in the sleeper berth and you're in the sleeper berth, you're fine. To sum it up in a shade tree kind of way to make it simple where they get you with the FMCSA or a DOT officer is in the cab of the truck and that's left up to great interpretation great interpretation so once again it comes down to what is the carriers policy for example I'll just put it out there how many of you go to the truck shows and get drunk as a skunk I know one guy that was drunk as a skunk, doing a live feed, finished the live feed, went and got his truck, cranked the truck, moved it three rows to put it out in the middle of the aisle to show his show his lights off. Could he have been hammered there? Sure. Absolutely. But what's his company policy? If your company has a zero tolerance policy, it means you can't have it. If your company follows the guidelines of the FMCSA, 
then yeah, they can drink it as long as they're doing the right thing. We're all grown adults. Correct? Correct. And just like James Best said right there, there was no proof he was drinking. He could have been, he could have took NyQuil and he had a bad reaction to NyQuil. You don't know. And frankly, it's nobody's business. And that's all I'm going to say about it right there. It was handled at the lowest level between the carrier and the contractor. Period. Bottom line. That's all it needs to be worried about. And ain't nobody else's business. But the reason I want to talk about Kevin here is, is to throw this but in there. But somebody or a group of people decided they wanted to interject their business into it and sent the clip from Coach's video to my insurance company. Sent it to my insurance company, which further complicated the mess, which further created a fight, which further created stress, not only for me as a carrier, but also for Kevin and his family. It's bullshit. Everybody wants to be involved in everybody else's business. So what's going on? What's going on with this? Oh, this guy did this, so we're going to make it harder here. People calling people's companies, people doing this, people throwing all this kind of crap around. Mind your own business and stick to your own crap. Because what you could have possibly had done, because everybody knows this industry is run by the insurance companies who are not regulated, and it's very difficult, thank God for an organization and their attorneys, they could have shut me down, threatened to take my insurance away if I didn't do a certain form of action. But once again, I'm the kind of guy who's going to stand there and tell them they can go get screwed, for a lack of better words. I can't prove who it is, their logic evolution, so I'm not going to say. All I'm going to say is it was a crazy move, and that's the kind of crap that's going on. Now, moving on from Kevin. It's being said that work piece, I'm a piece of crap, that coach is a piece of crap, Canel that clamp it's a piece of crap. Why? Because we're helping somebody out. And I'm only speaking for me on my part, okay? Number one, when we found out what happened to Hensley, all right, it was requested by the family that we not say anything because of the situation and the details involved in it. And we abided by that, but we're wrong. If other people were needed to know or they wanted to pay others to know, they would have told them. They would have called him. But no, we're wrong for not saying something. But Hensley being Hensley, you know, he had a conversation and there was a video done and it further complicates things. Instead of letting processes play out. It's nobody's business. until we knew what was going on. And then once we knew what was going on, between four people, four friends, four people who talk, we came up with a solution that did not require, uh, that did not require the involvement of a charity or, as I like to say it, any kind of organization that's gonna require a lot of red tape. It was something that we could handle the way I look at it, coming from a military background, at the lowest level possible. If we can handle that at the lowest level possible, we can handle it. We can do that. But we're wrong, right? We're wrong for helping people. Everybody preaches brotherhood, trucker unity, all this other crap. But when it gets right down to the nitty gritty of it, you're wrong if you do it. But let me tell you about some of the people I've helped. Okay? Since people want to say I'm a piece of shit. Let me start at the beginning. Everybody remembers when, when Mr. Stevens was going through a rough time. He did a video from his front porch saying he was struggling. His truck wasn't ready, so on and so on. All right, He was offered a job to come drive a truck for a while back at Bellaflor until that truck was ready. But not only that, but Yeti 
sent the man back some money that Ike had sent for plates. Well, guess who took care of Yeti? Gary did. And I helped with that. A time coming up after that. Who remembers two years ago at Gats when Will showed up in his truck? He had that beautiful W9 with that with the wrap that nobody had seen yet. He was going to display it inside. He he had to take his truck inside, right? Who remember who's been with me that long ago and remembers when hey, Will had a load to deliver, but Travel Loco didn't square Will away to, to deliver the load down in Waco from Dallas. Who did that? I did. And didn't ask for no compensation from it. I drove that load down there in the middle of the night to Waco and came back. This guy, the piece of shit that did that. I very well could have told Will to kick rocks, get Travel Loco to take care of it. I've helped families who were in distress. There was a family that lost a son, a boy, a family member in a house fire they lost everything to include a child and I did a video and all I asked was for every view I was going to get I was going to donate to it I donated over four thousand dollars to that family to help them that was me that was me a shit bag right a piece of shit I'm the kind of guy that two weeks ago driving through Baltimore there's a homeless guy sitting on the corner Ain't had nothing to eat. It's below freezing outside. I reach back here in the thing, and I got them little uh, tuna things that you can get at Walmart for a dollar. I had like 20 of them. I handed them to him. Here, man. At least put something in your belly. Then we come back to Will. And I still consider Will a friend. But you know the part that really burns my ass going through this is the fact of being humble and the humility of it all. Because somebody gave me a shot two years ago. Somebody blessed me. Somebody reached their hand out to me and said I was deserving of this. And they invested in me. And I turn around and I invest in my friends if they need help. Will was in a bad spot. He was in a bad, his family was in a bad spot. He needed help with the cold thing. I talked about it with my wife, and we discussed it. And yeah, I gave Will $5,000 to cover those fees. To cover those fees. And I told him. He's like, man, I'll pay you back. I said, don't worry about it, man. The, best, the only thing I ask is take care of your family and get yourself right. I know I won't see that money back. And I know he did a video talking about he's going to get in the settlement. Dude, that guy's going to run. He ain't going to come back. All you're going to get is a soft judgment. I won't see the money back. It's just the purpose of the humility and the being humble about it to realize that you were helped at one time by the same person too. But when you do shit like this, it turns around and you, that hand that was reached out to you to pick you up, basically you turn around and you fucking bit it. No. No. No, Captain Jack, he ain't paying me back. And I don't expect him to pay me back because I know it won't happen. Cole's going to stay in the Dominican Republic. They're going to get a soft judgment against them. All it's going to be is a piece of paper that says there's a soft judgment. It'll go against the credit report, and, and he'll never see anything like that. But, you know, there's other people that help Will, too. When Will had the problem with his daughter and he needed help, a guy that Will doesn't like started a GoFundMe. The same guy that Ike called friend, but behind his back when Ike left started a text message blasting the man about his lie that he told instead of letting the man live it with his friends. So, so everybody in America could see it, but the, that same man, that same individual, started a GoFundMe and raised over $2,200 that was sent to Will to help him and his family when his daughter needed help with her heart condition, when, to get Will home, to get Will and his family up over that hump. And I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but it seems like 
That's the only way people can learn humility. That's the whole thing about it. Humility. The hypocrisy of it. Everybody bashes people, calls me a shitbag. Me a shitbag. You know, I saw that video, Jeff. You called me a shitbag for helping people. Saying I'm plotting in the background. I wish I had time to plot. I, hell, I barely got time to even t talk to my own wife most days. But when I can help people, I don't care who it is that they're my worst enemy. I don't care if Ike Stevens called me today and said my house was on damn fire. I need help. I'd probably help the damn man. I wouldn't be so much of a dickhead as to tell him, hey, dude, I really can't stand you. You need to start drinking water and do a lot of urinating on that sucker. You know, you got Clampett that helped Will out at one time. You got other people that have helped Will out. You got people that have helped little guy Trucker out. Where's the humility in it, guys? People were wrong for helping others. But yet, everybody in the industry wants to preach it. You want to preach it. I've helped Thor, too. Maybe not financially. But he knows he could call me at any point in time, and I'd probably help him out. So, yes. Yes, we came up with a plan to help Hensley. Why? Because... When I heard what happened to Hensley and I knew what was going on, I saw at any point in time something that could happen to me or any one of us. A man that was being given a shot at his dream. And the first thing that went through his mind was I just lost it. And it brought me back to a comment that I made before. I think it was to a magazine article or it might have been something, but it brought me back to that was that the comment and quote that I had was, you give a veteran a new mission, watch the light in his eye, or watch the life in his eyes come back. And that's what I saw in Hensley. Hensley was being given his shot, his shot. And something unfortunate happened. And I, me personally, I was not going to allow that truck to go anywhere. Because that man needs all the motivation and the help he need, can get to maintain it. Not going to allow that to happen. Won't do it. And I understand that truck and review channel. It's up to each individual. But people that help should not be torn apart. They just shouldn't. They just shouldn't. You know, and I, I, Damon, I agree with you. I think that's the thing that, that, that bothers me about Thor is, is the fact that he preaches brotherhood. He preaches all this stuff. But yet, as soon as it happens and you see it conceptualized and taking place, the people are bashed for it. Sometimes it is the dollar bill that is needed at that point in time. Maybe it could be a hot meal. Maybe it could be... Hey, a pick up off the ground, a kick in the rear end, and get back up on the saddle, man. Maybe it could be, you know, a cup of water, a warm jacket. It's all different. It's all different. But when it happens, people were bashed for it. Where's the humility in it? Where is the, the humbleness in it? Where is the actual doing when it comes time to execute? You're a crap bag. You're a douchebag. Or what I've been called lately, a shit bag for doing it. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, I guess I'm a, I'm a shitbag as well for donating to charities, right? Donating to Trucker's Final Mile last year. Donating to St. Christopher's Fund. Donating to the American Red Cross. You know, that's bad, right? 
I guess I'm going to be a crap bag too because I'm donating to, uh, what is it, Truckers United that sends kids with cancer to, to uh, summer camps. You never, you know, I, people that have helped me in the past that have reached their hand out to me to pick me up when I was in the worst, I'd be damned if I'd turn around and bite the hand that at one time picked me up from somewhere I did not want to be. That even goes back to my military days. Old, 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 you know, sergeant majors, old, old squad leaders, even some old soldiers. You just don't do that. You thank them. That's something that's gone in the world today, apparently. It's not right. It's just not right. You know, four guys, four friends found a way to help another man. I mean, heck, I guess what? We hit the two or three month mark and we revisit this. And if it comes down to a situation, I guess people would be really upset if I'm in a position to where I could pay Hensley's truck off. I could put a temp driver in it that could drive on the contract that I've established. And when Hensley is well to get back in the truck, that temp driver can move on and Hensley gets back in his truck. I guess if that plays out, that's a bad thing, right? That's the whole thing. Nobody wants to pay it forward. Nobody wants to pay it forward. Nobody does. Oh, and just so you know, I was, you know, I was driving, I was listening to Coach's thing, and there was some rattling about 30% from YouTube. Hey, Coach, whatever YouTube takes, you let me know, and I will get the difference to you so the 100% of that can go straight to the truck. Let me know. Because here's the thing. Even as a small carrier, there's options that we can do to help Hensley. But we're wrong, right? Because we don't tell America about it. When did it become so important for everybody to know what's going on in everybody's lives? What's going on in everybody's pocket? When did it become so damn important? Did it become so damn important to know that how I'm handling a situation as a carrier with one of my contractors that somebody had to send the information to my insurance company to create a more difficult situation? Is it so important to know what people were doing for Hensley that they got to create the man additional stress by text messaging him, calling him, trying to get him amped up when he does not need to be amped up? And no, see, Gary, that's the thing. Nobody wants credit for it. For example, when I helped Will out, he was like, dude, I'll tell people it's from me. I said, I don't want people to know. Nobody needs to know, Will. That's between me, you, your family, and my wife. That's it. But by God, people found out. It doesn't matter. Exactly, Truck and Review Channel. And if it comes to that, then we will make adjustments. Make adjustments. I mean, I, I don't get it. I'm, I'm baffled. You know, to me, it's just hypocrisy. People forget that they were helped at one point in time along the way. But they want to turn around and, and bash people for it. Hell, maybe helping Hensley now in his time of need, it could change his life. It could. It could change his life.
See? <laughs> well, there's a good thing right there, James Reed. That could also possibly happen. Put a driver in the truck and give Hensley the profit. That could happen. It's Hensley's truck. That's, I mean, like I said, all different options. I mean, if people were ticked off about this, honestly, I hate to see what's going to happen here in about two weeks. The damn world is going to fall apart. Hell, I got called a piece of crap because I hired Jay. Why? Because I paid it forward and I gave a man an opportunity as well as he gave me an opportunity. And Jay's doing well. But it's a bad thing because he shut his channel down and he just wants to concentrate on his business. It's simple as that. The man wants to concentrate on his business. And he's doing well with it. Hold on. What I think is funny is people were making claims about putting the money in coach's pocket for the truck. What if anybody owns a truck and it can't be paid for they lose it in their livelihood? Exactly, Randy. And that's what we don't want for Hensley. We don't want him to lose that livelihood and we don't want him to lose that spark and hope and motivation. And when we were talking to Hensley, the funny thing is, is like I said, the whole plan, like Coach laid out, was the balance is going to be paid down. And he, I remember Hensley, when he found out a little bit about it, he was like, he was like, well, I could never pay you guys back. Dude, just get better. That's payment enough. Don't want the money back. Get better. Watching you get back in that truck and go down the road is payment enough. That's it. But no, he can't be left alone to do that. There's got to be video after video after video and, and message after message after message, phone call, all this other stuff, stirring him up because his friends helped him. Exactly, Razor Bear. Exactly. Big Dog, it should have stayed between us. But you know what? It gets to a point to where enough of the slander and libel happens and the miscommunication and the dragging through the mud at Hensley's you know, expense needs to stop. And the truth needs to come out. So for me, I guess it's me here asking, leave Hensley alone. Leave him out of it. This will probably be the only time I address it. I've got better things to do. People say they're his friends, say that they wish him well and, and they want the best for him and they're there to help him. But by God, you're stirring him up. Stirring him up. Exactly, Truck and Review Channel. I can't help everybody. I wish I could. I really do wish I could. But I help when I can. I do. <laughs> I just that's just me. Yeah, I saw that. A decorated combat veteran and a weak man. I, I saw that comment. And I, I, I can't, I'm just not even going to respond to it. There just is no response. You know, Will says he hasn't talked to me in months. My number hasn't changed. I know you changed your number, but mine hasn't changed. You're welcome to call me. My number hasn't changed since I was an 82nd Airborne. Jody Scott, it's not that 
I don't think Will is attacking Hensley, but he's attacking the people that are helping Hensley. We're wrong because we didn't tell Will and all of social media what was wrong with Hensley when his family asked us not to say anything. So we respected the wishes of the family. So we're wrong. We're wrong because we kept what was going on with Hensley between friends and who knew and came up with a solution. You know, it's just, it's, it's beyond me. It's baffling. You know, I was asked not to do a video. I was asked not to do this. I was asked to stay, you know, keep quiet. But it just gets to a point when you've you, you got to get it off your chest. you got you know, you got to have a conviction for your friend and say, leave him alone. Let the man heal. Let him do what he's got to do. If anything, be supportive. If you say you're going to be there, and I've heard multiple people say it, oh, I hope we want the best for you. If you need anything, call. If we, all he needs is rest. That's what he needs. He needs rest. Everything else is covered. His baby mom, he told us his baby mama can cover the bills at home. It's the truck that he's worried about, and that's being taken care of. Everybody else can be emotional support. That's exactly what he needs. I mean, it's just, oh. You know, some I, I think somebody in coach's feet called us heroes, and we're not heroes by far. All right, let me make that clear. I don't ever want to be considered a hero. What I want to be considered <laughs> is just a good man that continues to pay forward something that happened really, really good in my life at a really shitty time in my life. But there are those that want to tear it apart. Not just, you know, for me, but tear other things that are going good for people. And it's it just, it baffles me. It really does baffle me. Yes, James Reed, I was in 82nd from 2000... 7 to 2012, end of 2011. You know, everybody's so concerned what's going on with everybody's pockets, everybody's business, everybody's this, everybody that, everybody this, that they, that it's like they miss the details in life. They miss the details in life. They miss the little shit. <laughs> now that that is true logic evolution you know it's just it's crazy it really is I mean I, I reached out to a saw a retired sergeant major not long ago and had a conversation with him and uh, the one thing that me and him talked about was was the the army values that you're burned with, you know, you get burned with them and it becomes part of your life and you live it and you, it just carries on with you through your life and they still carry with me. Truck and Review Channel's in here. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. You know, the acronym is leadership, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity. And personal courage. Every last one of those I continue to live with. And I do my damnedest every day to carry out. And it takes personal courage and integrity. 
and there's got to be some leadership somewhere to do the right thing. The integrity part of it. Do the right thing when nobody's looking. But the problem is, is you got people that want to do the wrong thing when they think nobody's looking. And it just tears people apart. Why? It's just beyond me. I don't even know how long I've been going. <sighs> you know, and <sighs> trying to calm myself down here. I said I wouldn't get worked up. Let me go back and see some comments. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's another one that I did too, right? I'm a crap, I'm a shit bag for that one too. You know, Red Monkey Trucking can play a guitar, a hell of a guitar. And <laughs> I'll tell you the story about that one. But I'm a shit bag for this, right? There was a guitar three years ago in Dallas that was on the auction. And at the time, I couldn't afford the, that guitar. There was a reserve on it. It was a Jerry Cantrell uh, guitar. Had been autographed by Jerry and everything. I couldn't afford it. I just couldn't. Over time, this guitar kind of made its way through the chain and never really got auctioned off. And then one year, it came back up for auction by Bill Weaver. And he was auctioning it off to for the proceeds to go to Trucker's Final Mile. Now, let me tell you a little secret about why that guitar was so special to me was because that during my last deployment, um, I really got into Alice in Chains, especially this song called Nutshell. It was talking about uh, Lane's dealing and how he dealt with depression and his addiction and all that stuff. And anybody who's been following me knows that I'm a recovering addict. I'm going on three and a half, four years now, you know, free, free and clean, and I'm proud to admit it. But that guitar meant something to me when I saw it. And I told myself that I would, I would learn, I would learn how to play that. Well, I I bid on that thing, and I didn't care what the price was going to be on it at the time. And I bid and bid and bid, and I won that guitar. Well, I had it, and over time I learned that I don't have the dexterity for it. I just don't. Okay, I have nerve damage. I just don't have the dexterity for it. But I met Red Monkey Trucking, and I was watching his videos, and and he can strum a damn guitar, man. I love listening to him play when he can play. And I reached out to him, and I said, you know what, brother? Because he's a veteran, too, and I know some of the stuff he deals with. And I told him, I reached out to him, I said, hey, let's meet up. I want to give you this gift because this guitar is too beautiful and probably sounds too good to be sitting in a, on a wall. And that's what I did. I met up with him. Finally, we crossed paths, and I gave that to him. And he's like, I could never pay you back. I said, I don't want you to pay me back, man. I want you to just continue to pay it forward. Pay it forward. That's it. Tell your story. Play some music. That's all I ask. But I'm a shitbag, right? These guys that are helping people are shitbags. <laughs> hey, tell me. I guess that's the one question. Why has why it got to be so hypocritical? And why is it so wrong for people to help? Oh, you're trying to buy Hensley. We ain't trying to buy him. Ain't try, I mean, he's not for sale. He's not a, 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 a thing of damn cereal. You guys make it sound like it's the guy that's in church with the offering plate. As the offering plate comes along, he puts a damn chicken bone in and pulls a fucking $20 bill out. I mean, come on. I guess, I guess society and humanity has gotten that bad, right? 
that it's, it's wrong to do to do right by other people. It's wrong to help your fellow man or woman. If it's wrong, then I guess me as a person, me as my company, will never be damn right. We just won't. Just won't. We just won't. You know, we just won't. TRC, I hope it won't be a bad night for you, man. And if it is, you call me, brother. You got my number, just call. You know, it just, it baffles me. It baffles me. I've always been taught and was trained in the Army that, in the military, that if you're going to talk, it be about it. And that's what I do. If I tell a man or a woman or anybody that, hey, you need help, get hold of me. Reach out to me. I'm going to do what I can. If that means that I need to put a couple dollars in your pocket at the time, I'm going to do it. If that means that I'm in a position to offer you a job, I'm going to offer you a job. Hell, let me tell you a story about our president. I guess he's wrong for helping this person out too, right? Donald Trump, I can't remember what year or when it was, but he was building one of his casinos, right, one of his hotels. And during the process, the construction crew or somebody or security caught a homeless woman that was living in the building as it was being constructed. And when he found out about it, he actually approached this woman and they went to court and he told the judge he wanted to drop the charges. You know what he did with that woman? He made her the building manager. She runs that entire building. And when asked why he did that, he said, who knows this building better than her? Immediately changed that woman's life. But he's wrong, right? He's wrong for that? Or is it okay because he's Donald Trump and he's a millionaire and now he's the president? But it's wrong for me and Coach and Jay Cannell and Clampett to help out this man. <coughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. <coughs> Let me see some comments. Dude, it's not even YouTube stress. What it comes down to is it's the fact of the hypocrisy and, and, and the reality of it. Everybody says it's for entertainment, it's for entertainment, it's for entertainment. It ain't for entertainment. People, they, they, they blurred that line of entertainment and reality. Yes, that's her, Damon. That's exactly who I'm talking about. That woman still lives in that in that in that uh in that tower. She's the building manager for it. She doesn't have to pay anything as far as rent and stuff because, like I said, Donald said nobody knows the building better than she does. She lived in that thing as a homeless person from the day that the structure was actually con constructed. That's exactly who I'm talking about right there. I'm not worried about it. I'm really not. Like I said, this will be the only time and the last time that I address it. If I'm wrong, then I'm never going to be. I'm never going to be right, and I'm fine with that. I can live with that. I appreciate that, Blake. I really do. just amazing amazing y'all got anything else for me here like I said coach if you're still in here um, 
I'll call you later about it. Or I'll call you tomorrow. But whatever, find out the total number, what YouTube's percentage is going to be from that, and let me know. And we'll make sure that the whole 100% uh, gets to the truck. All right. Let me know if you, yep, there you are. Kane Slayer, exactly what you said right there is why I came back into trucking. Bring the camaraderie we had in the military over to the industry. Because what I saw in the industry when I came back into it was a direct parallel from what the military does. What the military does. We have got to rely on each other out here because we don't have anybody else. Of course we have our families at home, but when we're out here on the road and we're on this asphalt, nobody else is going to take care of us except the other drivers. Nobody. Nobody. But yet we're quick to tear each other down when we do help each other. And it's complete hypocrisy and it's bullcrap. Bullcrap. Like I said, people talk about it, but they ain't about it. Exactly. Quick. Quick's, uh, quick's what I call old school. Quick's old school driver. I've talked to Quick off and on. Sorry if y'all, I'm, 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 yeah, screw it. I'll just set my coffee right here. I'm still drinking coffee. Mike, last time I heard a joke told over the CB might have been one that I told. My CB's on right now. And there's no chatter on it. It's been on the whole time. The whole time. You know, it, 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 it it's just, that's the bottom line of it. There, I, maybe that's why everybody says there's no true brotherhood in, in trucking is because every time that somebody does show it or you see it being executed or being carried out, uh, people or a group of people were quick to quick to tear it apart. So nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to show it. I mean, come on. It's just, it gives me a headache. It really does. But like I said, I mean, I'll close it out with this, you know. Yes, I've helped Will multiple times. Yes, I've helped other people who can help Ike. I've helped organizations. I've helped other individuals. I've helped, you know, I'm helping Hensley. I'm going to continue to help. And honestly, it's really nobody's business how I help them or, or when I help them. If you consider that wrong, this is my official statement. I will never be right in your eyes. But I will continue to do the right thing whether you're looking or not. And if you can't live with that, then please seek life elsewhere and remove yourself from my life. Because I do not need that negativity in my life nor do I want it around my company period that's just the bottom line of it the way that I can put it the easiest way that I can put it in the most crystal clear that I can put it at this point Everyday Ray is a good example. I love Ray to death. I do. All right, Gary, I'll give you a call, man. It just really is. It just <laughs> it just is. I don't know. 
That's all I can say. That's the best way I can put it. I don't need that kind of negativity, and I'm going to continue to do the right thing whether people are watching me or not watching me. And if others can't live with it, seek life elsewhere. I'm to the point where... Well, there goes somebody squawking. I just I ain't got time for it. Thank you, Truck and Review Channel. Thank you. I'm there with you. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Like I said, I don't need the negativity. And I'm to the point where I don't want it in my life no more. I like who I talk to. I like the people I'm associated with. If others care to be a part of that, then they're fine. They can be a part of it. But if not, then seek else life elsewhere. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. It is the code, absolutely, TRC. TRC knows the code. He knows it. On my back. Yep. Yeah, horsefly. I just timed you out right there. Yep. Sure did. I timed you out. I ain't got no time. I don't have time for that. Um, or anything. And my back RD. Yep, I'm back. Yeah, I timed out Horsefly because I ain't got time for that. Posting Will's Cash App in here. I, I don't have time for that. That's not the. This is not the place, nor is that the time. All right, y'all got anything else for me? Um, I already talked about with Kevin. Kevin is doing well. Um, what was handled between me and Kevin is handled between me and him as a carrier and a contractor, and that's all anybody needs to worry about. All right, y'all got anything else for me? Because I'm going to get out of here. The State of the Union address is supposed to be start, starting here soon. All right, TRC, man, you be good. I appreciate you being here. It started. Okay, all right, I'm going to get off here. I really want to go watch that. Um, and like I said, this is the last time and the only time I'm going to address it. Um and this is it. This is the this is the bottom line. The rest of it moving forward, helping people. I'm gonna try to do more videos to help people, new fleet owners, you know, all that good stuff. That's all I'm about, man. That's all I'm about. You guys have a good night. Go over there and listen to the State of the Union address. See what the direction of the co the country is. You know, support, don't support, whatever it is. All right. Y'all have a good night. Y'all take it easy. <laughs>